Good morning. My name is Pan Kroniet and I am from the Department of Civil Engineering from the Concrete Lab of the University of Tokyo. And today I would like to present my study on the development of expansive agent model based on hydration and microstructural formation. So oh, to solve the issue of cracking from a material point of view, expansive additive could be used for shrinkage compensating effect and chemical pre-stressing. But even with such benefits, there is still a lack of quantitative research to estimate the amount of the expansion produced. So it, most, it, depend, it mostly depends on the experience of expert engineers who have experimentally dealt with the materials to judge whether it's appropriate or not to use. And it means that uh, using it too less would result in no expansion, whereby using it too high would result in cracks. And uh, meanwhile, our research group at the University of Tokyo Concrete Lab has been um, developing a multi-scale thermodynamic analytical platform coded as DUCOM-COM3, in which um, DUCOM, it covers the thermodynamic modeling part, whereby numerous models, such as um, the hydration heat model, the micropore structure formation model, and the moisture equilibrium and transport and its counterpart, which is uh, a nonlinear structural finite element analysis that um, implements the constitutive laws of uncracked and cracked concrete. And with the goal to make um, DUCOM COM3 as the lifespan simulator of concrete structures, the main objective of this study is to increase um, the program's capability by adopting an expansive agent model based on the chemical kinetics and microstructural formations in order to make rational judgments based on the mixed design, which incorporates expensive additives. And the scope of this study would only be to focus on calcium sulfur aluminate base and uh, free line base expensive additives. So uh, before I move on ahead to the modeling part, I would like to give a brief explanation regarding the assumptions which would be made for the model from the physical point of view. So the first assumption that would be made is that uh, the amount of the expansion is not totally accounted by the change in the solid volume. And the schematic diagram shown here were made from um, Ogawa's SEM image under a specific test condition by using synthesized Awin. And as can be seen in these red boxes, uh, even after the degree, the degree of hydration has reached approximately 70%, the expansion hasn't even begun yet. So therefore we cannot conclude that the volume change is directly proportional to expansion. And secondly, the expansion phenomena would be based on crystallization pressure, which its initiation begins once some sort of critical stiffness is achieved. As shown in stage three here, once the contact point has been established and the pay skeletons possess uh, minimum stiffness, repulsion due to uh, crystallization pressure would appear at the contact points, and then it would start to push the skeleton apart from each other to make the expansion. And thirdly, as the hydration progresses, new expensive hydrates would contribute to the crystallization pressure and expansion would continue to occur. So with that being said, the scheme of this study would be the focus of these three main points, which were uh, based on the assumption which we mentioned previously. So first, it's the development of the hydration model for the expansive phases. And two, it's the microstructure of the system of expansive additives. And three, the expansive pressure, the expansive pressure itself, which is to be calculated from the amount of the expensive hydrates. So first, let's start off with the hydration model. So the degree of hydration it could be determined as the amount of the heat released at a certain time t divided by the uh, maximum heat released by all of the component of the cement phase. And then the amount of this, the heat release is further can be uh, determined from the, uh, from the product of the heat rate of, a, of each component by the time elapsed. And the hydration heat model for DUCOM is primarily based on Arrhenius law of reaction for computing this heat rate HI, whereby the reference heat rate, uh, which is the heat rate at um, the temperature of 20 degrees Celsius and the thermal activity, this EI over R are the required, the most crucial parameters. And for expansive additives, which are, uh, 
which contain these three extra phases, such as awin or yellamide, free lime, and anhydride, the current model do not possess yet. So therefore, the initial step would be to include this uh, reference heat rate of um, the previous phases, whereby the thermal activities could be determined from the literatures. And in order to determine this uh, reference heat rate of the, um, of the expansive additive phases, a simple approach through XRD and verification with uh, isothermal calorimetry is adopted. So initially, to limit the parameters under investigation, a 100% replacement ratio of expansive additive would be mixed. And then by doing the combined XOD well and TGA, the degree of hydration of the free lime, alvin, and anhydride would be determined. And after that, by simply multiplying the degree of hydration with the maximum enthalpy of formation of the phases, the amount of heat liberated at time T would be determined. And then the heat rate, uh, is further um, calculated by finding the slope between this uh, Q at time T of each phase and, uh, and the time T itself. And after that, the, uh, heat, the heat rate would be uh, installed into the DUCOM system whereby it will be verified with the isothermal calorimetry test. And uh, point one here is the chemical and mineral compositions of the materials which were used, whereby point two and point three are the enthalpy of formations of the mineral phases and the thermal activities of the expansive additive phases, respectively from the literatures. And through the process which was mentioned um, earlier, the heat rate was determined to be as followed. And through using the, uh, that heat rate, the calculation of the degree of hydration of 50% and 100% replacement ratio of expansive additives were used. And the dots here represent the X or D result, whereby um, the line represents the analytical result. So quantitatively, it is not um, matching superbly well, but um, this seems to be pretty reasonable uh, for a preliminary study. And the figures shown here are further comparison between the XRD experimental result from Morioka and Denka company. And uh, it is undeniable that the study of hydration should also be considered at lower replacement ratio in addition to the interaction between different cement phases to ensure the validity of the model. However, as a pre preliminary study, towards making expensive additive model a realization, such sophisticated consideration are not made for the time being. But nonetheless, based on the accumulated heat from um, isothermal calorimetric experiment and the results given by the model, they seem to have some fairly good agreement as a um, starting point. Thus, as stated, as stated previously, preliminarily, this model is taking uh, for computing various parameters such as hydration degree and the amount of expensive hydrates for the subsequent model to, to uh, calculate the pressure. And after we have obtained proper degree of hydration of expansive additive or expansive agent phases, the next step is to consider the microstructure itself. So um, based on the degree of hydration of phases, corresponding products would be produced. Um, for example, uh, free lime, uh, it would produce the Portlandite, whereby awin, it would produce ettringite given enough calcium sulfate. So uh, in the original model of DUCOM, the minor phases such as ettringites, monosulfate, gypsites, and others, they are intrinsically considered in the volume of CSH. But um, as an extension for the expansive additives, uh, microstructural model, addition of expansive ettringites and uh, calcium hydroxide from free lime were added to the current microstructure model. And however, as, uh, as mentioned earlier, not all of the expensive hydrates could cause expansion. So crystallization pressure are known to establish from hydration of parent reactants in confined regions. So thus similarly in the model, only the hydrates which are formed after the particle contact uh, would contribute to uh, expansion. And this particle contact occurs when the cluster thickness delta has reached, um, has reached half of the uh, average distance between the two particles.
uh, which the two distance, the distance is uh, S and which is, this S is a function of um, Blaine's finest powder density, water to binder ratio and the mean particle size. And uh, then the expensive hydrates, which are formed after the particle contacts are termed as um, the effective expensive hydrates. So after we obtain the um, microstructure of expensive hydrates, the effect of expen uh, the effective expensive hydrates would be used for the calculation of expensive pressure. And uh, from thermodynamic point of view, the local crystallization pressure PC could be could be computed from the following equation, and then um, uh, Kusi showed that the local crystallization stress could be related to the microscopic stress through the relation as shown here. And after obtaining the microscopic stress, uh, the total stress in the cement place is considered through superimposition with the creep and shrinkage stress from uh, our currently available solidification model. And thus the interaction between the shrinkage and expansion is, is coupled together. Uh, now the, the primary point to tackle is to determine the crystallization pressure of the crystals, of the expansive crystals. So as RT over nu is pretty much constant under a certain temperature, this LNK over KSP, which is also called as uh, the saturation factor or the saturation index defines the pressure. Now, how do we determine this saturation index? So based on through solution hydration mechanism, it involves anhydrous, it involves anhydrous cement grains detaching their particle into waters and which then the water would become a solution of ions. And after the solution has reached its supersaturation state, the hydration products would be formed and precipitate back on the particles. And K is usually obtained from the products of these ions in the poor solution. However, in Dukong calculation, based on the amount of the heat releases, the hydration products are computed without the need to consider the equilibrium between the solid and the aqueous um, solution. Thus, obtaining K through the ionic concentration is uh, impossible as of now. However, one possible way to obtain the saturation index could be through uh, uh, relation by a function of uh, unreacted reactants. So based on a study by um, Chao Sali, the saturation index of uh, ettering guide was experimentally obtained at different amount of Awin added. And then um, based on his XRD did well result, and the diffraction pattern, they showed that the Aoyin content at one day is around 60%, whereby Aoyin is completely finished by seven days. So instead of using the um, ionic concentration, uh, an imaginary or a fictitious uh, saturation index for etching guide based on unhydrated Aoyin is proposed through the equation as shown here. And once we get the saturation index, Crystallization pressure is uh, simply calculated by multiplying with uh, RT over nu. And the same logic was uh, implemented for the case of free lime. And uh, so far, this is the result of the free expansion test of cement paste bars uh, with the size of um, 40 by, 40 by uh, 160 millimeter cube at water to binder ratio of 0 0.4 and uh, 20 degrees Celsius in seal condition, which uh, shows tolerable result. And um, the usual test for expensive additives, uh, expensive concrete is followed in Japan, is followed according to JISA 6202 with restraining steel bar of 0 0.97. So under this test condition, the effect of the addition could be reflected considerably in the practical range of uh, uh, around 6%, which is this red line uh, for shrinkage compensating effect. So uh, in summary, based on the composition of the clinker, the hydration degree would be calculated. First, the, the hydration degree could be calculated based on the uh, multi-component heat of hydration model. 
which is based on the heat released by each component. And based on the hydration degree, the microstructure of the cement matrix is formed, whereby fractional volume of uh, expensive hydrates such as calcium hydroxide and ethylene guides could be determined. However, not all of the not all of the uh, not all of the volume of the expensive hydrates are accounted for expansion. In fact, only the volume of expensive hydrates after the contact points have been made would contribute to expansion. And then, um, using that uh, that expensive that amount of effective expensive hydrates, the expense expensive stress could be expressed through upscaling relation by Cousy to the concrete and then superimposing it with the solidification model, which determined the creep and shrinkage of both cement paste and aggregates. This system of calculation could capture the behavior of both expansion and shrinkage of cement matrix based on the initial chemical composition of the binder. So that is all for my presentation. Thank you for your participation.